All right, let's get this started. Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I am coming back at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. In this video, we're going to continue on with our World War II project update. All right, so if you've come to any of these updates, uh, or if you're familiar with my updates, what I'd like to do is let you know where I am, what kind of progress I've made towards completion of my project, what kind of models I've painted, what kind of terrain I've made, what kind of rules changes I made, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, today I've got big news. Um, it's good and bad news. Bad for me, not for you, right? Um, It's a mixed blessing. Let's just say that. It's a mixed blessing. I don't know how to bring this to you. So, I wrote down some talking points to remind me because my mind is swirling. Uh, I wrote down some talking points to help guide me through this video because um, I could easily forget something or miss something. It's big enough news I think it's big enough news that instead of waiting for Wednesday live stream to kind of tell you this, I figured it would be more appropriate for the World War II project updates. And the project updates come on, uh, I upload them weekly, sometimes more than that, sometimes daily, but uh, bi-weekly. It just doesn't matter. It's just whenever I feel like something new and interesting needs to be shared I'll jump on video and I'll let you know. Okay, for those of you that don't know, I have a World War II project and I am working on building the terrain board for Lafir Bridge. Uh, this battlefield is very bespoke uh, and it has, yeah, it's where uh, soldiers from the 82nd, part of the 507th, Parachute Infantry Regiment and the 325th Glider Regiment actually um, have an engagement with the 1057th Grenadier Regiment um, elements of. Uh, we're looking at maybe a company per side. And uh, it's a pretty nice battle. I've played this in various different rule sets over time. I played it using the rules called Battlefront, Command Decision, uh, Operation World War II. Um, at the time, I think that game was called Operation Overlord. But either way, I um, have uh, I played in a variety of different rule sets, and now I am uh, excited to bring it to Battle Group. Um, over the last couple of months, I've been gradually, slowly working on these tiles, uh, building them up, adding things to them. I've even added things to them a couple of nights ago. Uh, and, uh, I've, I've made these two by two sheets with some model railroad and grass on the top and slopes and I build a bunch of hedges and all this stuff. And uh, looking at the battlefield, uh, I've had some suspicions. Um, the causeway felt, because remember, I played this in other game systems. The causeway felt kind of short. Um, and I also looked at the, the way I've got these, and now this is, I'm playing it in 15 millimeter, so I'm kind of visualizing 15 millimeter. I'm just putting it in saying, oh, this is okay. This is all right. This is, this is the way it's supposed to be. 
And then uh, I placed the buildings in the Kakigni area, the city, and they seem to be too close together, right? There, there's just not enough room to place the buildings where I believe they should be. Uh, I look at the farm on the far side of the causeway, and there's just not enough room. There really should be about three to four buildings there. And I just don't have the room for that many buildings because 15 millimeter built. Remember, the ground scale is not exactly the same as the figure or the building scale. So there's no way to get them in there. I mean, I can get a couple of buildings and it will look good. And so I was just working on my project. And I uh, went to the actual scenario in the battle group overlord d-day book and uh i found an alarming note it it explained all my suspicions but it did throw me for a loop Are you headed down? I am. The map is supposed to be eight feet long. What the f I've been working heavily on a six foot long battlefield. I went to uh, Google Maps. I pulled up the map of the battlefield. I used my ruler and I found, you know, an area that I feel the battle should take place in. And I blocked it off as a four by eight table. I'm sorry, four by six table. And then I started making tiles that would match the terrain, the road placement and the causeway and everything for that map. So after crying myself to bed, I woke up with newfound purpose and I've got a new plan. I'm gonna start from scratch. That's okay. I've got quite a bit of time to do it. And I learned quite a few little lessons building that other terrain table that I'm not going to repeat on my new table. Basically, I did things on the other table that I thought would be good. Um, and they turned out to be not so good. But I was willing to live with it because I was working on that table. You know, I was like, okay, you know, so what if this happens? It's okay. So what if this happens? That's all right. But now I've seen that and I'm not going to repeat those. So that means this table is going to be better, in my opinion, I think. Um, I can't use the old tiles. I can't. I'm going to have to. I'm just going to scratch them. I'm just going to take them. I'm going to cut them up in little pieces and put them in the dumpster. Um, I'm going to salvage whatever I can off of them, but I don't think I can salvage anything really um, off of those tiles. Yeah, I think they're all just going to go in the trash. So imagine, imagine this. Imagine me taking a six foot map, which is where it's at now. And hypothetically, just think it think of it as like a, a PDF or not a PDF, like a like a like a PNG or a JPEG on your screen, right? You got this four by six, and I just grab the corner and I stretch it out to eight feet. Well, all the buildings are gonna get stretched apart. The roads are going to get 
widened, which that's not good. what's going to happen. The roads are perfectly wide. But what that means is the roads will be more appropriately scaled on the map. The paths will, like if, they, if there was like a, a Y intersection close to the edge of the map, it's as I stretch the map, it's going to get the, the Y is going to get a little bit wider, but also further away from the edge of the map. So the Y is, instead of it being so close to the edge of the map, it's going to like that, right? Um, the, the road between uh, the, the, the su southern dirt road that goes along the ridge line was only like this far away from the ridge line. And now that I'm going to stretch the map out, it's going to be another inch or two away from the edge of the slope, which is which is good because I felt like that road was too close to the edge of the road or the the, the slope. the The river, um, I like the width of my river, and when I stretch it, it's going to stay the same width because that would be more appropriate. Uh, the bridge, I still got the same bridge. I'm going to use it. Uh, in the farm, there's there's only this little area on top of this like corner slope area that only has room for like two buildings, maybe three if I really expanded it. But now I'm going to, not only is the map going to expand, but I've also decided to shift the map a little bit so there's more room to the edge of the map behind the farm. So there's going to be a farm and then like little, a little orchard behind it. Um, that's going to get stretched. Those building spacing is going to get stretched. I'm probably going to be able to slap a third building in there. Um, there is technically supposed to be a building on the southern road that I didn't put. I did not put it out there. I felt it wouldn't fit between that dirt road and the edge of the slope. So now with there being a couple of extra inches, I think there would be an actual little farm building that I can put further down the map. Okay, so, so the map in the book specifically says six by eight, right? Okay, well, that's not what I'm going to do. I am going to do the eight feet. I am going to stretch it out like I like I said I was going to do. I'm going to stretch it out. But I've decided to adjust where that map is. Like I've got a, a four by six area. I'm going to blow that up to a four by, uh, I'm sorry, an eight foot area. And I, I'm, I've decided I'm going to make it a five by eight. Be, and the main reason why that is is because my personal table is only five foot wide. Uh, it's five foot by nine foot. So I don't want to have six inches overlap on both sides of the table. That would be okay. I thought about it. I said I could do six by eight, but I'm not going to. I've decided I'm going to do five foot. I'm going to make it the size of the table. We're not going to worry about it. I'm only losing about six inches on the edges. And the map that they provide in the game book, it's not a good map. It's it's like a it's like a a kindergartner drew the map, right? So it basically has all the objectives where it needs, where the buildings are, where the causeway is, where the low ground is, but it doesn't it just says this is the low ground, this is the causeway, this is a building, this is the road. I mean it doesn't it's not well designed, right? So I mean, it's well designed. Let me back up. It's well designed, but it's just written like a kindergartner. So here's a couple of changes that are going to happen. Um, I'm not, okay, I, I use this two inch blue foam, right? Two inch. It's very thick and sturdy. Um, I could just lay it on the table and I would be content with that. Uh, putting like terrain on the top of it, laying out these two foot squares, boom, 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 done. 
right? But in this in this battle, there is low ground that I need, not high ground, because I could like make hills and lay them on the table in various areas. But luckily there aren't anything like that that I need to concern myself with. Um, because I don't like uh, generic hills that you just lay on the table. Some battles I think that's okay, but if I'm trying to do a bespoke battle, I would like to produce the hills. Okay, but in this case, this is an alternative. This is a, a low ground. So I'm going to take my two inch tiles and I'm going to slope them down, right? Just like you've seen before in the previous tiles. But then there's low ground, right? And there's a river that runs through the low ground. I could do it like I did my battle, uh, what is it? Operation Overlord map, because I made an Operation Overlord map for 28 millimeter, nope, for 20 millimeter miniatures. And uh, what I did there was I made the, made the battlefield, but I didn't do anything with the low ground. I just laid a blanket on the table underneath the low ground. Actually, underneath the entire map, really. So everything, everything laid on this, this map. That's a way I could do it. I could do it that way. I could get some, I could get some cloth, which I have a ton of. That's no problem. I've got many, many wargaming table covers. I got probably 10 of them. Um, I could find one that I like. That's like um, a five by eight. I've got a lot of five by nines. I could lay it down and then just lay these tiles on top of that mat. Don't have to do anything with the low ground. I could, at that point, I could paint, which I've done in the past, paint the fabric, giving it the illusion of like fields um, and stuff like that, which I've done that in the past. I've got a I've got a sheet right now that I made as a whole table cover with just fields and stuff. Uh, or I could use my canvas. Um, or I could just get a new canvas and just make it bespoke. But I have this I have this um, canvas that covers my it's like six by ten or something like that. It's huge. And uh, I got it specifically for Quattro Bra, but and I painted it for Quattro Bra. But if I wanted to, I can repaint it over, uh, and I can just repaint it, right? But the only area that I need to paint is the area of the low ground. The rest of it all be under tiles. Okay, so placing a cloth down on the table. Uh, that's the way I've done it for many years, and uh, it's, it's what do they call it? It's the uh, tried and true method, but I want to go above and beyond that. I don't want to have a cloth on the table and then throw some hedges down and some trees. Uh, now, in this case, in this case, I would have some field tiles. Uh, that I could lay down in the low ground, right? The wooden hard tiles, and I can lay those down, and I could even lay them in patterns that would um, disguise the fact that the uh, cloth was the base. Uh, and then I could use my, my magnetic rivers my flexible rivers, I could lay them down along the edge, the Meridoret River. So that is a that is a um, that is a possibility. Uh, the other possibility is putting uh, gluing the uh, sloped pieces 
to uh, the pink board uh, and then texturing it, right? Uh, and then the pink board would serve as the low ground, but what that would, and then I would have loose pink board that I would just slide underneath the rest of the map to elevate it up uh, to the same level. Uh, I've considered that. I've considered even like a hard board, like MDF or something like that, going under the entire map. Um, I could do hard board for the low ground uh, with these sloped tile pieces glued down to it, but uh, that would add a lot of weight, and I'm trying to avoid the extra the the weight of this map even though it would be it would be pretty good and i could texture and everything else the mdf that's under and then if and then i could just have some loose mdf to to slide under the rest of the tiles to keep them elevated um that's that is a possibility because then it's also only like two millimeters thick uh but i don't think i want to do the mdf I think I want to do the pink foam, uh, but I, I've considered not gluing the slopes to the pink foam, just setting them on there, just just like I would be sitting it on top of a, uh, a, a, a cloth mat, I would be just sitting it on top of the pink foam. And I think I will have um, like a gap or, or a smooth area of pink, maybe painted black or something, and then the, the slope sitting on that smooth part, and then have the rest of it textured, and then on the far side, a smooth part with the slope, and it just sits down on the pink foam with the, scent, with the inner section being textured. And one reason why I want to do that is because then I can make a bespoke river, and I can just put extra pieces underneath the rest of it and nothing will be glued down to the pink. The pink will be its own table and then the, and then the blue will be its own overlay, overlayment. And uh, I think that'll work. I, I think that's the way I want to do it. And one of the reasons why, and, you're, and you got, you're like, but Mr. Everything, what's going on? Why are you even thinking of this? Well, one of the one of the things I was upset with was myself. I, I glued the pink foam to the blue foam using watered down Elmers. I spread it out, made it as thin as possible. Actually, it wasn't Elmers, it was tacky glue. But I spread it out as thin as I could, and then I glued the two pieces together and um it took probably over a week to dry. Um, I found that the glue in the center of the tile didn't get enough air because the glue on the outside dried, sealing off the glue on the inside, and it would not dry. I probably could have poked some holes in the pink foam on the bottom and gave it enough air to dry, but um, I didn't, and and it didn't even have to dry because once the outer edge dried, it was done. It was, as far as I'm concerned, that was that's all I needed. But the issue was over time, and I noticed initially it was good. I mean, it, it looked awesome. I weighted it down, I let it sit for a couple of days. Everything seemed like it was dried, and then I started storing it without weight on it. I basically started just stacking them up. And then over time, it, they started to, or actually they started to go like this. So um, I didn't really notice it at first, but then when I started placing my tiles out, I noticed that they were, um, they were teeter-tottering because they had a bowed bottom. And so they would teeter-totter. And the maps, when I butted them together, they would look like this. And then they would be so far apart because they weren't flat. They were like 
all my tiles started to do this. Well, not all of them. Like two or three of them started to do that. And it was enough for me to go, crap. <laughs> so that, so what I do, I took my um, metal ruler that I've got and I jammed it down in between the two tiles and I peeled the tiles apart. And believe it or not, it was a lot easier than I thought because the glue hadn't dried. Once I broke the outer seal, basically they came apart. There was wet glue still on the inside. And then I pressed them back together and put, I turned it over, put a big weight in the center. And that fixed the majority of it, believe it or not. It actually started to uh, come together fairly well. But at that point, what did I notice? The end started to peel up. So there was like a little bit of a separation of the pink and the blue along the edge. And I basically have been struggling with that for the last couple of months. Basically, um, the majority of them are okay. The majority of them are okay. But there's a couple of them that are like that. And that's just enough to wear on me. Uh, and so I'm actually happy to start another project in a way because... I can just say, F those guys, you know? <laughs> Another problem that I might have caused was when I did the Mod Podge sealing around the edge, I also did the bottom. I did the Mod Podge on the bottom to make sure that the bottom was nice and sturdy and stiff. But the Mod Podge I used was like their basic sealant Mod Podge and not their hardcover Mod Podge. So it didn't really make it, I mean, it did help. It helped a bit, but not as much as I was hoping. And I also have a feeling that that Mod Podge caused some of the problems with some of the warping, possibly. Because when I put it on there, I couldn't put a weight on it because the Mod Podge was on there, right? So it basically just sat there drying. Um... And I have a feeling it warped the foam. So going forward, I think I am going to Mod Podge the bottom. But I'm going to do it in small sections at a time. I'm going to do like a four inch section and let that dry. And another four inch section, let it dry. Um, and while it's doing that, I'm going to weigh the foam down. So I'm going to like do it in various areas. And then when those areas are, and this might take months to do, I don't know. But I am going to eventually... No, I'm not. What am I thinking? I am not my podge. What am I saying? Mr. Everything. I'm double-siding this. <laughs> I totally forgot. I'm, I'm totally forgot. I got the Mod Podge for the outer edge. I'm going to outer edge, which shouldn't have any effect on any warping. First of all, it's not going to be glued to anything. And then uh, there's going to be grass on top and bottom. Um... One thing that that's good for is uh, if I was not to use the pink foam and I just lay it on the table, the grass on the bottom would act kind of like as a as a grip to keep it from sliding around. Um, I also might texture very lightly, texture the pink, uh, maybe with a little bit of sand here and there, just to keep the tiles from sliding around. But I'm probably not going to do that. I'm probably not going to do that. Um, okay, yeah. So, why am I double-siding it? Well, I, I'm going to... Since I have the tile and the backside's not going to be used, I said, why not make a battlefield on the, on the backside as well? And that backside battlefield, I said, well, since I'm thinking about running that AWI, uh, Land of the Free, I'm playing... Um, Freeman's Farm, why don't I just put Freeman's Farm on the back of like a four by six table? Uh, I wouldn't be able to do it on the back of the areas that are sloped, but that's okay because I'm going to have a ton of just straight up two by two tiles. And I'm also going to have a bunch of extra two by two tiles. So if I need to make anything bespoke for that, I certainly can because I think there is actually a a uh, redoubt on a hill um, 
in that battle, so I might have to make a hill. And plus, by not gluing it down, I'm going to be able to take these 2x2 two two tiles and slide them back into the box that they came in. Uh, they come six in a box, which is perfect for a four by six table. Um, I ordered two more boxes, even though I probably didn't need to order a second box. I did anyway, because once you start cutting out the hills for the low ground, you can use half of it for this slope and then the other half for this slope so and then i actually have an extra piece so i'm gonna have a lot of tiles that i'm and some of them are going to be generic just grass some are going to be um with a road and stuff and if i need to i can use them and make a modular in a way but for the uh lafir bridge it's specifically going to be my uh bespoke for that battle so I'm going to be happy with these tiles being double-sided, I think. So let's get to the good news. Um, or continuation of the bad news. Okay. This isn't really bad news. This isn't bad news. This is just news. And news is not good or bad. It's just news. My hedges and my bocage. Okay. I specifically made those hedges and bocage bespoke to my four by six table. The gaps in the, the between the roads, the, the distance between the roads, the amount of gaps of where the gaps are placed and all that in the bocage. I, this is part of my anguish is that when I make the new table, some of these bocage are probably not going to be, well, let's just say I'm going to have to make some more bocage. I have about 30 pieces. I'm probably going to need to make about another 10 pieces. Not a problem. It should take me just a few hours. But I do I have reserved myself saying, okay, I'm going to have to make some more bokash. Hedges. Same thing with the hedges. The uh, There's a bunch of hedges. I didn't finish all the hedges because there were some hedges that I wanted to make for the fields that I was going to place in the low ground. Uh, now these hedges are, uh, so I don't have to make those. Well, I do have to make them, but they're just, they might be a different length or they might be. So I'm going to have to make some more, more hedges. That's no problem. You can never have too many hedges or bocage because if you ever do any D-Day, Normandy, Hedro country style scenarios, you know, you need a ton of hedges and bocage. So, I'm going to make those. Um, so, yeah, I just know I'm going to need a lot more hedges and bocage. Okay, the buildings. Uh, like I said, I'm going to I'm gonna probably have to paint up a couple more buildings. Um, one for the farm and one for the road south. But uh, I have, for the 4x6 table, I finished all the buildings. I painted them up, I textured them, I did everything that needed to be done on those buildings. They are 100% complete. Uh, I probably could spray a sealer on them, but I did a video that I'm going to upload after this video that shows me painting those buildings and getting them ready. Okay, but part of that was, okay, not... I filmed it, but then I decided I'm not going to use that. Um, I'm not going to do that. So I just threw away half the video because I took, I basically filmed two videos at the same time. I said, okay, I'm going to do this as part of this video. And then I'm going to do this, which is part of this video. And I went back and forth until I got to the end. And then I went through and I, and then, and then my, Epiphany happened where I'm gonna to have to change the map. So I said, okay Half of those half of that video that I made about the terrain tiles. I'm just gonna chuck Not gonna do it. 
what I had done in those videos was I had taken a building where it was going to go on the map, drew an outline using my X-Acto knife. I cut an outline and then I gouged out all the foam under the building so that the building would fit inside that hole. So it would actually fit into a slot on the table. So the building would be, so the, the base of the building, which is like a, a sheet of MDF, would be disguised because it would be at the same height as the foam. And so when I flocked everything and then I flocked around the base of the building, it would disguise it as being part of the table. I'm not going to do that on this. I, I, I did it. It works. I like it. Part of the issue with that is, and, and this, this compounded my problems, was I had this long farm building, uh, stable building. Uh, I guess it's a coaching inn or whatever, but it's a longer building. And in the, in the farm complex, it overlaps two of the uh, tiles, right? There's a seam and the building sits on top of the seam. So I gouged out a little bit of this side. I gouged out a little bit of this side laid the building in there. It lays in perfect. It's good. No issues. Except the tables wobble, right? Because of the issues that I've been having. So with the tables wobbling, that building kind of sticks up and out. I'm not going to do it that way anymore. Hopefully these tiles are all going to lay flat. I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that these tiles lay flat and that when I put a building on over two tiles it just sits on there and there's none of this BS what I plan to do is uh, and I saw this done on a railroading uh, show actually I watch a few of these railroading terrain building like how to build a model railroad uh, terrain table and all that I get a lot of ideas from that this guy takes some painter's tape, right? And he lays it down generally where he thinks the building is going to be. And then he puts the building down, right? Cuts around the painter's tape and peels up all the extra painter's tape. And then puts the building on. So then there will be a square of painter's tape on your table where the buildings go. Okay, following along. Uh, so that when you texture, put the dirt down, put the grass down and all that stuff, you go into the painter's tape, you peel it off, and now you've got this little square with no grass, no texture, nothing. It's just styrofoam, right? And then when you take your building, which has a flat bottom, you can just set it into that little groove, which it's not a big groove. It's a, less than a millimeter, but it's just enough to keep the building from moving around. Now, what they do is they would glue it down, right? But I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to glue it down. I'm just going to set it down in there. And I might put, I might put um, a little extra you know, just a little extra um, texture paste around that blue um, painter's tape so that when I peel the painter's tape off, there will be just a little extra uh, texture paste giving it a thicker groove, plus it'll be It'll have grass on it. It'll be flocked. And what I'll do my best to put some bushes right along the edge to disguise it as well. Um, actually, I might not do that because I don't want bushes sticking up from the bottom of my table. Because when I flip the table over, yeah, so I actually might put, I might not put a little extra, I don't know. I want the tables to be able to be double-sided, so... I probably will not have foliage sticking up from the bottom or the, you know, at the time, the top of the table so that when I flip it over it, it'll be foliage getting crushed. I'm not going to do that.
but that's what I plan to do. I'm going to make these little foundations. I'm going to texture around them, flock around them, and then when I pull the painter's tape off, there will be a spot where the building will just fit nice and snugly down inside there. Uh, instead of cutting into the foam. I thought cutting into the foam would be a good idea. It worked. It was a good idea, but I just didn't, it didn't, it didn't, I didn't like, it wasn't the best idea. Okay, what else? Okay, so here's some good news. I've ordered two packs of these blue foams, which is probably a pack too many. But that's okay. If I've got a bunch of extra blue foam, I can use those for additional double-sided tiles. I could even make another bespoke battlefield. Like I could probably do Quattro Bra or something, right? So I will, uh, even Quattro Bra, yeah, even Quattro Bra or Hills or something. I don't know, I, but I'm going to keep them separately in another box. Okay. Um, in addition to the foam squares, I ordered more than one roll of paper grass grass paper four different colors probably i think it was four it might be more but i ordered a bunch plus i've got some like eight by elevens eight by twelves i got some eight by twelve sheets as well that i can put out there in places but my plan is not to just take one green meadow cover and just cover the entire table with the same color not going to do that i've decided that was a bad idea. What I'm going to do is cut small pieces and place them in various places throughout the battlefield, between roads, between hedge lines, stuff like that. And they're all going to be randomized different colors. Uh, they, they're going to have to be butted up against each other. So there's going to be paper seams. Um, but those paper seams, my plan is, I'm going to, that's where hedges or bocage is going to be laid. So I'm going to be laying a bocage or, or a hedge directly on top of the area where the paper seam is at. So the field on the left side of the bocage might be a brownish color, where the field on the right side of the bocage might be a greenish color, and then a, and then mixture of different colors and that's the idea is to have it be like a model not model but model uh, of diff motley of different uh, patterns throughout the entire battlefield that that's going to serve two purposes um, I was disappointed with the solid green battle map it didn't look realistic in any way, shape, or form. It looked like a golf course. So I needed to create fields to lay in the fields. Why do that, right? Why? And see, I, I was disappointed with that. And this way I can correct my mistake. I can just put the fields in the fields. And uh, they can, they, uh, the separation between the colors lets me know or gives me a guideline of where I need to put the hedges when I go to place them. So it'll be, it serves two purposes. It'll make the battlefield look more realistic because there will be a lot of different types of fields. And it'll help me lay out the hedges. So I plan to do that. And if there's ever a spot where two fields meet, and there's a gap in the hedge because sometimes there's there is that I'll just put some texture paste in there to disguise the edge plus it'll look like a transition from one field to the other it'll be dirt or whatever that's what I plan to do okay um I also okay so I think I've already talked about most of this uh the mod podge the double-sided the trying to avoid the warping that the Elmers might have caused, it was actually uh, watered down tacky glue. Um, I plan to test 
some Super 77 gluing the um, slopes down to the pink uh, and see if that warps. I'm, I'm going to make something just, I'm just going to make one and test it, let it dry, weight it down, see if it, and give it a couple of days. And if it works, then I will uh, finalize that um, on the rest of them. Um, yeah, let me, okay, now, before we leave, that's it, basically. You, you're pretty much up to date. Okay, what else did I do? I, um, my order from Battlefront, this is uh, part of this update. Um, I decided that I wanted to order some scout cars and a sniper, because they sell a sniper. I decided to order them. Three bucks for a sniper. I mean, that's crazy expensive, but whatever. I decided to do it. So I ordered a sniper, the, uh, the, um, some armored cars, and then I decided I was going to order some Falsham Jaegers. So, and maybe an anti-tank gun for the Americans or something. I don't remember, but I placed an order. And, uh, they immediately sent me an email. Well, no, they didn't. They didn't immediately send me an email. I sent them an email saying, uh, you know, what's the status of my of my order because it was supposed to be in middle of February and they said it hasn't gotten in yet they're still waiting and I said okay can you and then they said and in that same email they sent me saying half of the items I ordered on my second order were out of stock as well and I I said okay so am I gonna have to wait for everything to come into stock before you send me anything and it was kind of passive aggressive and they sent me an email back saying, what we'll do is we'll take all of your items that are in stock, ship them now. And then when the other items come in stock, we'll ship them. And there won't be any charge for shipping because both halves meet the, uh, the minimum, 125 or something like that. 120? Yeah, 120. Uh, I kind of feel like that was... Um, I appreciate... Let me back up. I appreciate that they decided to send half of my order with no shipping. But they didn't... I just assumed they wouldn't charge me any shipping for the second half because my total order was over 300 bucks. So I don't, we you know both of them combined. So, and then I, and then I told them, okay, yeah, this is important. Then I told them to cancel my grenadiers. I said, cancel the grenadiers, the machine guns. I don't need those. And they said, no problem. So I won't be doubling up on German grenadiers, which I'm happy about. Uh, all right, before we leave, let me show you uh, the map that I'm working on. All right, so this is the map, right? And these black squares are the two by two foam maps, okay? Um, But as you, and then the, okay, hold on. Let's, let's just get rid of everything. Okay, so this is the map. And you can see this, this map hasn't really changed that much from my four by six. I still have these little fields down here that I was working on before. I still have this road, you know, um, looks like the highway goes this way. And this is a secondary road, it looks like. Uh, and then this road, and then this little 
this so this area right here looks the same right like this this hasn't really changed that much uh, and then this was cut off right about here so I extended it back about that far right which is about six inches I gave myself about another six inches so and then I stretched it out to be eight feet uh, and from with if this is eight feet this is actually only five feet and so we can do okay so the pink boards and the uh and the black boards are all on there okay so the way i did it here was i just measured four across and four across uh that's a four by eight right there and then i put these one by twos up here to make it five feet um right and by by putting the by putting the five foot there and the two foot there and all that stuff you're noticing that this tile now is the main tile right with the city occupying the majority of the tile and uh and then the, the start of the causeway okay um and then the pink board um i'm not sure how i'm going to do this uh, this is kind of still on the on the um design stage but i could lay three uh three um two by twos down here right um and then i could put a cup now all the pinks that i have showing are because of they're the ones that are actually part of the low ground there will still be pinks back here and over here they just will not be part of any tile. They won't be glued down or anything like that. Now, uh, this tile, actually, since it's not going to be a double-sided tile, I could, in fact, do the sunken, uh, not the sunken, but the uh, raised bushy bushies on the, on the buildings. Um, there is, there's supposed to be a building down in this section, which now it looks like I'm going to have enough room to put a building down there. Uh, I went through the background and uh, using the paintbrush, I eliminated the buildings that were up here. I eliminated the parking area. Um, I eliminated this little factory that's down here. And there's a farm complex up here. I was able to eliminate all that. Uh, if you zoom in, you can see uh, the church and its surrounding area, which I've already got finished. And then there are a number of buildings in here. This is where I plan to put three buildings, like one back here, one in the middle, and then one right up front. Uh, and then you can see over here, I had a long... Uh, building representing the farm uh, complex, the um, coaching building, and then one building up front. So that's what I did. I did one here and one there. Um, okay, so this area here is low ground. This, all the way up to here, actually. So both sides of this river on this side. And this is, these fields here were all flooded. And then these, and you notice how the fields don't have the exact same color. They kind of like light green, dark green, you know. That's what I want to do. I want to, even if it doesn't match this, I do want to just kind of alternate the field colors. I don't mind if two of them side by side are the same color, like these three. That's okay. I just want to throw in some patches of alternating colors. Um might even put like a little walk trails through the field or whatever but you can see these down here look like plowed fields these don't maybe this one does but 
Um, the, there's entrances to the field between the hedges, like here and here and there. And I want to model all that right there. There should be another one right there. Um, that I that I want to model all that. And then this road going up there, that's not a road, that's a hedge. Um, right. Okay, so back to the pink boards. Okay, so... Um, these pink boards uh, don't have to be exactly two by two, right? I can make them one by twos or three by threes. I can make them whatever I want, uh, but I want to make them two by twos, no bigger than two by twos, because I want them to slide down inside those boxes as well. So it'll make it easier for me to transport them to and from uh, to and from tournaments and, and uh, conventions and stuff like that. So this board here, I think, is going to be a one by two, right? Um, and that way, this two by two, and this one by two, and then these two by twos, that'll be a total of five feet. And you can see that this board will be kind of under the causeway. Um, and there's going to be, I already know, there will be gaps in these boards and so i considered because there's a field line right there uh that this could be a two by two right um and then i could make this maybe even i don't know what but i was thinking i was going to do a two by two here right um because of this field line but then i said nah we'll just we'll just put like three full two by twos a two by two, a two by two, alternating right there, kind of, you know. Um, I, I wouldn't have to do that. I guess I could put this two by two up there and then put two by ones side by side right there. I don't know. That that, that might be the way to go as well, uh, making one big river and then one little weirded out river underneath and then another river there. Um, that's, that might be way I'm going to do it. I might go two one by ones right here. Um, but I, I like to, I like to checker pattern it kind of like that to give illusions of the way the field are supposed to be because there's a gap in the field. I'm sorry. There's a gap in the, uh, board right there. And... Yeah, I think it would be better for me to alternate these two. Make this a two by two and make this, because then this gap won't, uh, won't line up with this other gap. It'll be, yeah, they'll be set, they'll be, okay. Yeah, see, we're brainstorming right now. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to put two by twos along the top and then one by twos right here. And then these will all be two by twos. And these will match up with the tiles there under. Now, this tile right here will be pretty, pretty much. Okay, I can back that up. Boop, boop. Yeah, this tile here. Um, yeah, so let me show you the hills. And this I only penciled in because I'm not sure exactly how I want to do it. But I penciled in the bottoms of the slope okay so the bottom of the slope will go here the 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 causeway in the new map is going to be the same width and size as the old map it's just going to be a little bit longer yeah this causeway is going to be almost you know well like a foot and a half you know from the bridge well, well, hold on, hold on. This one tile is two feet, so it's definitely going to be almost three feet across. That's that's accurate. That's awesome. Uh, the scale of this map is slightly different than my old map. My old map was one inch 
was 15 meters, right? This map is a little bit different, not much. It's one inch is 40 feet. So, uh, yeah, if I needed to, if I need to measure anything on Google Maps or whatever, uh, divide it by 40 feet, and that's how many inches it is. Uh, but you can see now that this slope here is way bigger. Well, first of all, the slope doesn't go from the road down. It goes from the end of the bocage down. So just looking at this one bocage piece, just as an example, that is probably eight, six, at least six inches, right? Because from there to there is a foot. Yeah, so that's at least six inches. And on my other map, I only had it as like four inches. So that was a big, that's gonna be a big deal. And if it's like halfway across this tile to there is a foot, right? So from the backside of the, um, of the church graveyard area to there is a foot, that's six inches easily right there yeah so this this area is going to be pretty big that's that's more than a foot in length um, plus in the old map the the I'll draw right here this area this is where the other map cut so there was two feet back from here but there was a there was a cut directly in the middle of the town. Now there's not going to be. Now this town is all going to be one part of the same piece. Okay, the only the only thing that I have any real concern about is this right there. This road um, it's going to go off of the map. And there's going to be just a little bitty boop and then back onto the map. So that little corner right there of this road, um, it, it won't be a problem to model. It was just I was trying to figure out where I could put the two foot tile. I've been I kind of adjusted it around a little bit, trying to figure out the best way to model that road. And I figured uh, I tried going off this other side. I tried going right through the center. And I figured uh, going off the south side of this tile and then doing like a little, you know, cut the corner, I thought was probably the best way to do it. Uh, I'm also going to be cutting the corner with a little bit of road here. I might or might not actually do it that way. I might fudge and have this road just leave the table right at the end of that tile. You know, just do something like that. Um, that shouldn't affect the gameplay very much. I don't have to be like anal about it, right? Um, yeah. All right. Well, now you've seen the new tiles or the new, I should say, you've seen the new layout of the map. Uh, it's going to be a five by eight, which is pretty massive. Um but that means it's going to be the causeway will be more important because if you remember crossing and and that's the way it is in the game book if you remember crossing the causeway or the the low ground crossing the the uh, flooded area is a die roll of how many inches you move so you could be rolling a bunch of ones and that would take you all day to get across uh, this game, what's kind of weird about this game is there isn't a turn limit. Like, oh, well, we're only playing 20 turns. No, we're, we're not. We're playing till completion. So if you want to cross the open field, you can. It'll just take forever, right? Well, you might roll, you might roll a bunch of fives, and then it would only take like six turns to go 30 inches. Uh, but if you roll a six... You take casualties, so that's not always a good thing. And uh, 
most of the machine guns and stuff, I if I remember right, shoot like 30 inches. So if you're sitting in a defensive American position over here, you are not shooting the Germans over here. There is not going to be any kind of spotting or shooting like that. That's maybe a tank. Yeah, there is a tank. But uh, maybe artillery and mortars and stuff like that. Sure. But you're not taking any kind of... Uh, it's going to be very hard to see any Germans running around behind these hedges or, or bocage. And it's and so you're they're going to have to move up the highway, and my understanding is the Germans are going to have positions shooting onto the causeway, and this is not an unreasonable distance to shoot. That is, so. So yeah. I wonder if I could keep going back. Oh, that's just me. Yeah, as far back as I can go. Okay, so I'm gonna probably just have to redraw the pink. I didn't mean to draw the pink boards on the same map or the same layer as the black. Oh, well, my mistake. I'll have to review that. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for coming out and watching this update. And I should be getting some of my supplies in today, but that's not really what I'm working on right away. Uh, I got to wait to get um, basically over the next couple of months I'm going to be working on these again um, I got to measure it out I got to figure out where the hills are I've got to cut it styrofoam figure out where the hedges are basically I'm restarting from scratch and that's what's bringing me all this anguish all right well I'll catch you next time